Did the bubble finally pop in the US tech sector? In this video, we're gonna talk about it. So today, there was a news article out that says, Deep Sea, if you're involved in AI and artificial intelligence, you know, the last two years or so, this has been the biggest thing in tech, right? Everybody says, we gotta do AI, we gotta do AI, throw AI everywhere. And a huge problem that these people in AI had is cost, right? It costs a lot to run these data centers, these chips, and everything else is really, really expensive. And so the bear of entry into the market is super, super high. And now all of a sudden we got this Chinese company called DeepSeek that's actually um, open source and it's actually way, way cheaper than any of their competitors. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch a video of the news actually explaining it, of what's going on. And after that, we're gonna talk a little bit about that you don't even have to be the first to market, you just have to do it better. And we're gonna look at it, what they can do, what does that mean for you? So let's get into this news video. If you think about it, it could end up being the biggest story we cover, right, over the next decade or so, the race between the US and China. And today's news is about this Chinese company called uh, Deep Seek. And it, it says it trained an AI model for this amount, 5.6 million, less than $6 million, which would be really, really cheap to do something like that. They say they were using uh, 2,000 NVIDIA chips that are much less powerful than what US space companies are using. So it's kind of one of those things you see and say, well, that is huge, if true. And um, Deep Seek claims it is true, and it claims it has capabilities in multiple languages, can tailor responses to specific needs, uh, technical, formal, casual, uh, you name it. So let's compare and contrast here a little bit. The 5.6 million compares to maybe up to a billion for an American company. And Profit, the American developer, says its model costs somewhere between 100 million and $1 billion to build. So that's when you start to think why this could be such a big deal. So if the Chinese are able to do it for like 5 million and it's costing us a billion to do, to do it, that is a big deal. DeepSeek says it, it uses older NVIDIA chips because the state-of-the-art chips that companies in the US, like Meta and OpenAI, are using are not available in China because we don't allow them to have them, all the sanctions and what have you that are meant to prevent AI breakthroughs by Chinese companies like this one. So we're doing that to try to prevent this, and it happens anyway, not great, right? Here's DeepSeek, number one. This is the uh, the App Store. Uh, they just launched last week, and they're topping the free downloads chart, uh, just ChatGPT second. So it's DeepSeek and ChatGPT. That's today's list as of uh, this afternoon. So uh, pretty good. Now, the newest model is being called, as we talked about at the top of the hour, the Sputnik moment by Mark Andreessen, who's been a big deal out in the Silicon Valley uh, for years and years, co-founder of Netscape, and now actually, he was a Democrat for years, but now he's an advisor to President uh, Trump, kind of like Elon Musk in some ways, just not as, uh, as vocal. Okay, so as you guys heard now, is that it's so much cheaper to do than other models, right? And so one of the things that reminds me is, is like the touchscreen. We know that Apple didn't really invent or pioneer the touchscreen, but they made it first like application where it can be used and basically revolutionized the way cell phones are and all this kind of other stuff with their first um, iPhone, right? So when it came out, the Apple iTouch and all these other ones were a huge revolution. Um, but this was not the first time that touchscreen was used, right? So now we're looking at these AI modules that are like, hey, everything costs money in the world, we know that. But now all of a sudden, when you could train your own AI model for way, way less money, who's gonna have the advantage? They have the less sophisticated chips and they can train it for cheaper. And I think you don't need to necessarily have the best AI model. You just need to have one where it can do most things for most users for 80% of the users and then have it cheap compared to all the other ones, right? So. This is also the strategy that I use in my personal business. So me and Ali have this um, coaching where we help people get jobs. And one thing that we, that we found out is, hey, coaching to get into Silicon Valley and all these other tech jobs can be quite expensive. So when you go and you try to find a career coach or something else, it's very, very expensive if you want a good one. There's frauds out there and they're even more expensive, but if you want if you want like the experience of having somebody that guides you and helps you, gives you all the right resources, it's really, really hard to do unless um, you do it in a group, group environment and you kind of can do it like that. And then other career coaches still charge thousands of dollars. And so our strategy was like, hey, 
why can't we do and just cater to everybody? So we came on the platform school, right? And that's where we offer it for like $49 a month. So the bear of entry is just so much lower than spending two, three thousand dollars on a coach to do the same exact thing. And is ours gonna be that much better or worse? Well, if you join, you can decide. But at the end of the day, the value's there, right? And now you decide, do you do I wanna spend $2,500 on a career coach or do I wanna spend 20 or $200 a month on GPT or do I just wanna use DeepSeek AI, right? Do I wanna use that AI tool for way less money? Maybe it can't do all that. Maybe it's not that great at coding, but compared to the value price proposition, it might be worth it for you, right? And you're like, I don't need all that, but I can do, I can do with most of the features and I don't need everything else. And if I would do it, I would upgrade for a month or two and get that premium software and then downgrade to this other one again. So we're at a really interesting time where everybody dumps in money and all of a sudden it becomes fairly, fairly cheap, right? So when you're looking at everything in, in tech, in cars, everybody wants like touch screens and all this other stuff. And at the beginning it was more expensive, right? And all of a sudden now it's expected and every car has it. And so the same is gonna be with AI. And one time it's gonna be full adoption, right? At one time it's just gonna be, in the near future, it's just gonna be everywhere. And it's just gonna be a matter of who's gonna pioneer it, like the iPhone, and who's gonna make it so that it's gonna be done, right? And people will use it and be like, this is the way to go. It's almost like Chrome and Safari and all these browsers. It's like, who's going to have the majority market share and can make a good enough product to do it? And so necessarily being first to market isn't always the greatest. You want to have widespread adoption. When you look at the meta glasses and you're looking at the, the Apple, the, the uh, virtual headset, it just didn't catch on, right? And so maybe the timing was wrong, maybe the price point was wrong, or the consumer wasn't ready. So just being out first doesn't necessarily do success on your end, right? It might not be that when you're like, hey, I'm gonna launch this product, it's the first of my kind, and it's might not gonna be good enough, right? Or it might be that you're gonna come up with a product and you're way ahead of your time, and then in two years, everybody uses it, and that happens, right? So if you're deep CKI and you're like all the fuss and Nvidia lost like huge market share, I think they're like the stock's down 16% and it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. So now the proposition of people in tech are going to say, is it worth to have the best one or is it, is it, um, is it better to have a more affordable version that can't do everything right? There's like a, there's like a, sliding scale probably where it meets the where it meets the sweet spot where it's good enough and can do most things but it's not that expensive so most people can use it and kind of go from there right because if you can get widespread adoption and you can do it at a super affordable price that's what we're trying to do with my company then you can take over market shares and then it's going to be really hard for somebody else to say hey you know this ain't working right or this is because it's also open source, right? So you can look at it, you can do all these kind of things and be like, hey, I'm gonna develop an app around it or with it. And it's definitely, definitely interesting. And so now the US government, who was like, we're gonna ban TikTok, has an even bigger problem, right? Because once tools like that catch on, it's really hard to go after them, right? Because once you're gonna say, you know, deep seek, we're gonna shut it down at the US government level. And we're gonna say, you know, this, is, this isn't right all of a sudden there's going to be an inbound or something else to another app, right? And when we had TikTok and the band went live, a lot of people downloaded Red Note. That's a true Chinese app, right? So people in America are like, you know, if we can't have that, then we go directly to them. And so now the question is going to be is, are we on the right track? And I, see, and I read a few articles that said, oh, GPT is still better and it can do a lot more. It also costed a lot more, right? So you're basically comparing a Rolls Royce to a Toyota. And when you're looking at that, it's like, okay, are you gonna, is your Toyota gonna be the same quality and can do the same as your Bentley or whatever? And most likely it's not, right? We can all know that, hey, this is expensive. This is an expensive um, thing to build. It can do a lot of things. 
But then the question comes, how many of your users are actually using it the right way and are using it with the right intent in mind, right? Because if you're just going to use AI like, who's, uh, who's going to cook dinner tonight? Or tell me what it's going to be. Uh, tell me, uh, you know, sum up this story or sum up this email. These are not going to be these. You don't need the best to have, you know, you don't need the best AI to just have that. And so the question is going to come in, what are people going to use it for? What are people going to be doing with these AI models? Are people going to really like program their own apps and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to program an app for my house and then have, you know, have a GPT powered um, house with my own app. And there's probably people that are going to do that, but probably not the majority, right? And so let me know in the comments below what you're using AI for, because I'm using it for summarizing YouTube scripts and doing research and doing all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm uh, using it for because I feel like when I start searching on Google, all these ads and everything else and the fact checkers and all this other stuff, it's just really, really bothering me. And so I was like, hey, let me just ask AI to come up with bullet points and stuff like that. And it can reference articles that are out there. And so that's what I'm using it for, but I also make videos and do all that. So I'm curious to see what the majority of you guys use because if you guys aren't really using AI or just like hey I'm just using it for summaries or I take a picture of my fridge and tell me what I can make for dinner tonight you don't need the best of the best you can just use the free one or something else to kind of make it and it's not really worth at that price point to spend a lot of money on it but if you're like I'm writing code so when I walk inside my house my TV turns on and I can say all kind of commands and it will do it and it will see if I'm cooking and it will turn my fan on and it does a whole bunch of stuff like that, then you might do need it. But how much of a percentage of people or users are that? And that's the problem with the GPT premiums, right? When you charge 20 bucks, you get like heavy users. And when you use the free one, I don't know how much you're gonna be using it and what you're gonna be using it for. So it's gonna be interesting to see if people actually, actually really use it. Because if, it, if a lot of people don't use it, then it's gonna be really, really interesting to see what applications are gonna become AI powered, right? Because I see these ads in my space, in the career space, where they say, oh my gosh, what we're doing is we're just going to have AI apply and we're just going to have hundreds of resumes sent out um, with an AI tool because there's going to be AI, what do you call those? AI, um, AI, what are those? It's like AI agents where they can go and do things for you. And it's not, I think you got to pay $200 a month with GPT to get that where it kind of takes over the screen and does and can book you stuff. But at one point, that's going to be true where you can just say, hey, write me an email to John and it will write an email to John. And then it's going to be like, OK, so now we can have these agents starting to have conversations with people. So it's going to be an interesting time, I'm telling you. And I don't know if China has the upper hand with this deep seek or if it's going to be the U.S. because even GPT, you know, chat GPT, you know, open AI isn't so open because they're it's very very hard to get like information from him like sam altman the ceo is like very very protective of his product what i get but and i think elon musk is actually suing him for him because that's why the name open ai is coming in because they're like it should have been open source so it's going to be really really interesting to see what's going to happen but a lot of people lost some money on that nvidia stock 16 percent not that great so yeah, let me know what you guys think about all this. Uh, is there something to worry about? I don't think so. Not yet, at least, um, from my opinion. But hey, I'm a random dude just walking in Las Vegas. So let me know what you guys think. This was a little bit of a shorter video. And yeah, if you haven't, please, please like and subscribe to this video. I make them all the time. So yeah, this was it. And... I will see you in the next one.